విశాఖపట్నం పాండిచ్చేరి ఐ రియలీ ఐ కేమ్ సెవెరల్ టైమ్స్ టు పాండిచ్చేరి ఆల్సో బట్ ఐ నెవర్ ఓ వెరీ యా వెరీ నైస్ వెరీ నైస్ ఇన్ విచ్ కాంటెక్ట్ యు కేమ్ సర్ ఇన్ 2005 టు 7 ఐ థింక్ టు అరౌండ్ 3 టు 7 ఐ వాస్ ఇన్ ఆల్నే కౌన్సిల్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నికల్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ డ్యూరింగ్ దట్ టైం ఐ కేమ్ ఫర్ ఏ విజిట్ ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్ ఏఐసిటి ఐఐసిటి ఐ వాస్ దేర్ ఇన్ ఏఐసిటి ఐ కేమ్ ఐ వాస్ ద రీజనల్ ఆఫీసర్ అట్ చండీగా Okay, okay. Uh, okay. I, came, I some couple of professors in the university also. And Even I, 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 I came is is that there is one purpose is there. You see, during that time, Andaman okay. had a polytechnic college. Yeah, yeah. It is still there. Uh, yeah. It is still there. Polytechnic yes, degree college also there. Yeah, degree college. Both, uh, both the degree. institutions are affiliated to you only. Yes, yes. Dr. Ambedkar Institute of Technology. Yeah, uh, we are Ambedkar Institute of Technology now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That institute, actually, they applied for accreditation and affiliation with you. Yes, yes, still it is. We are affiliated. Still, I know, I know, I know that part. I know that part. Still, they are uh, with you. Uh, really. But yes, diploma yes, yes. is not with you, I think. Diploma is some, no. some other university. No, diploma is from uh, Mathe Pradesh. Uh, okay. Some state. Yeah. Yeah. Mathe Pradesh, okay. some uh, controlling authorities are there. Uh, diploma not, is from... Uh, see, there, is, there are a lot of confusion. Diploma is with Mathe Pradesh. Degree is yeah. with you. Yeah, degree I is with us. I mentioned this part, how this uh-huh. is possible. And administration yes. to a lieutenant governor reporting to Calcutta, West Bengal. Yes, yes, yes. There is a lot of confusion in the system. At that yes, point, yes. at the time, I... i in fact professor natarajan was the chairman and during that time i in fact i i came to the university for a nominee for that to uh, accreditation process okay i was there for one night also so, in the university guest house yeah that time i remember that is some what talking you are talking about dr t r nadeshan or some somebody else i forgot but uh, some is it 2002 i think in 4 or 5 I five okay 2003 to 7 and to that time between that time only yeah yeah nice nice to hear all this uh, yes yeah. you see our people you see all our people ps uh, murthy chakravarti and uh, uh, subhara garu sudhir kumar many people are there sir here uh, serious volunteers to be honest okay, okay. okay what okay, i okay. really okay. request is that to uh, see you are also in hmm. the same electronics department uh, Yeah, we can we can conduct to we can organize a, a joint programs and we can yes, have to yeah, apply most, for a joint yeah, project to, also i will yes, set up to help our people here so yeah, that most uh, this yeah, kind of things uh, is it what happens uh, i i really should not limited to the talks and events they should be yes, 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 this yes, area yes. and to come to the real research life also there should be some impact on that yes yes next yes. year we are conducting an international conference also in vaisa okay 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 certainly i will request you to help on that yeah, and definitely we also will really approach you on that so that to yeah. all should do you see what is happening many sections they only uh, work for the i triple purpose only not we are <laughs> what is it as a recommendation i always see that we need to work to beyond i3b mission and have a better networking between us for applying yes, yes. projects sponsorships joint collaborations etc to which yes, yes, you yes, belong yes. sir basically are you belong to madras section or where you will belong sir we are uh, basically we are belonging to chennai madras okay That's okay mission. therefore madras section only yeah yeah, yeah i know section. i know yeah madras section yanam is again in our our section only yes yes yanam 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's, again in Pandusari only, but it is an hour session. No, I also visited your place many times, uh, Vaisak, uh, in connection with the visiting Yanam College. Okay, uh, okay. As a part of the university inspection as well as AICT inspection. Uh, okay, okay. Up to Vaisak, we come by air, then from Vaisak on road. But okay, okay. Very, <laughs> that was very hectic journey for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, far, in fact, it will be 250 kilometers approximately. Yes, yes, yes. One yes. way. One way yeah. to yeah. this thing. Yeah. We will we will certainly collaborate and do something good, sir. For see, by, yeah. see you see you are a, you are a senior people at the place. Many of the people here in our area also senior good working people are there. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We can coin and we can collaborate for a, for a very good project, sir. That's what I'm looking for. Our yes, people definitely. are so happy to work on that. Yeah, definitely. We have, we have here a lot of facilities also there, sir. Hardworking people are there, good people are there. Therefore, they need not hesitate to depend on the people for collaborations also. Yes, yes I have witnessed to your, uh, one of your colleagues, uh, Dr. Subarao, who was our uh, uh, doctor student uh, met a couple of years before. Now he is uh, awarded, okay. he received the doctorate. Uh, okay, he's okay. A dynamic person from your place. I witnessed him very practically. I, I, I'll tell, sir, most of our people, the typical disadvantage is that we uh -huh. are, our people are honestly telling our people are kept under dark. They do not know. Otherwise, our people are really hardworking. Okay. Hardworking, okay. dedicated. We need to, uh, this is the way how basically we need to work. People really hardworking, they work and they dedicate. Better okay. than many people, our people will dedicate. Unfortunately, okay. what is happening is that the uh -huh. way methods and systems, uh, uh -huh. they are not much experienced. That was one of the okay. things that why we are not uh, that much forefront. In fact, we became a section um, just this year only. Previously, okay. we were a subsection. We became okay. a section. Last year also, uh -huh. we conducted one conference. And uh -huh. this year, we conducted a conference. Uh, yeah. Murtiyar, can we start? Huh? We will start. We will start. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we will speak later. Okay. Yes, sir. Nice. Nice Thank evening, sir. We will speak later uh, after the session or after some time. Yeah. Thank you, my Kiran sir and Lakshmi Narayan Garu. Yeah. Uh, good evening, one and all. This is TSN Murthy, Chair Communication and Signal Processing Society, Jamie Charter, IEEE Vizag Bay section. At the outset, it is a, in, indeed a great pleasure and honor for me to be a part of this today's lecture. Respected and guest of the today's function, Professor Nakiran Garu, Pandicherry Central University, and Dr. X. Lakshmanarayan Garu, Chair IEEE Vaisak Bay Section, our Dr. Executive Committee members, Vice Chair, Dr. Vignesh Chakravarti Garu, Secretary, Dr. N. Uday Kumar Garu, Treasurer, Dr. M. V. Subbara Garu, who is the coordinator for the today's program, and members, Dr. A. Ravi Garu and Hema Madam, and other EC members and the chapter chairs of the IEEE Vaisak Bay section and my dear participants. A very good evening and warm welcome you all for the today's talk on understanding optical solutions for 5G and beyond 5G. Thank you very much, sir. First, first of all, I would like, on behalf of the charter, we would like to extend our sincere thanks to Professor Nakiran Garu, who has accepted and request and going to deliver a lecture on the understanding optical solution for 5G and beyond 5G. Thank you very much, sir. Nakiran, sir. sir thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank yeah. you, uh, thank Please, you sir. Uh, Professor Surya Karan. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. The, the, cha yeah. the chapter is organizing a series of technical talks on recent advances in communicational signal processing area, sir. As a part okay. of this, we arrange today's lecture, sir. We are planning. Sir, shall I proceed? Hello. Unmute, uh, uh, Chandy. Hello. You are muted, sir. TSL, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, oh, it is. Uh, Yes, sir. sir. Now it's my privilege and to invite respected Dr. S. Lakshminarayan Garu, Chair IEEE Vaisak Bay Section, to address the gathering. Dr. Nakhineran, um, uh, today's speaker and guest for us today's meeting 
just sir murti chakravarti subara uday and hama and other people who are about and just before uh, this talk that in fact i was browsing about to uh, nakrivens bayan actually what exactly he worked earlier uh, really i could see a wonderful uh, resume of him he had a number of publications not only number of publication quality which is what he really produced number of phd theses phd workers under him projects and etc from a reputed university in south india i could really uh, we are happy to have nakiran in our uh, talk today his talk really is an, a, a relevant subject to the electronics and other people not to uh, to my area in fact i don't work in that area but still I think there are around 50 participants are there many of the uh, somebody scholars somebody students some researchers are there therefore i certainly expect that uh, dr nakiran's talk will be useful for them and i also request uh, dr nakiran to may help us in not only today in later also if any of the participants mail him and uh, interact with you in a future course of action that way basically we feel that to we need to have interaction we should not to particularly disconnect after this uh, technical talk so that the continuation should be there there should be some people maybe mailing him and getting information from him. that kind of interaction should happen that is what i really looking at it. with this brief words i request to is the murti to continue the like invite thank you murti garu uh, th- thank you thank you lakshmana and sir for your valuable words and uh, thank you very much sir now i cordially uh, sir now i request vice chair dr vivesh chakravarti garu please introduce our uh, g- chief guest of the today's uh, talk sir nakiran garu panchere central university to all thank you sir uh, this is dr sangeet Chak- thank you very much for the opportunity to introduce uh, professor nakiran sir to the participants and all the panel members uh, good uh, good evening to uh, chair of idp ni vaizag section professor nakiran sir and good evening to deep sun sir once again and good evening to nakiran sir and all the uh, a warm welcome to all the participants uh, now uh, it's a great privilege to introduce uh, just to uh, all the participants over here and as well as the pa- panel members uh, i am proudly uh, 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 professor uh, r nakiran sir has been working in teach decade with the department of electronics engineering school of engineering and technology pondicherry central university he has been associating himself with uh, several national and international professional bodies public high quality articles in reputed journals and conference proceedings besides handling funded projects mentoring the post graduate students and scholars at doctoral degree level established a strong bond with several startup companies and sharing his technical and personal experiences also serving as academic expert member for national and state level government and private organization and he is a man with strong faith on his own faith thank you sir uh, thank you very much now over to psn sir thank you chakravarti garu for nice introduction of today's guest now i cordially invite guest of the today's program professor nakiran garu pandicherry central university to start the proceeding sir thank you sir uh, thank you thank you very much uh, warm good evening to all the people gathered here uh, at the outset i am um, uh, immensely happy to uh, 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 deliver this lecture to uh, what you call the virtual mode of uh, communication uh, before i proceed to the slide presentation am i audible you are audible yeah, thank you very clear yeah, thank you yeah thank you uh, i at the outset i extend uh, my thanks to uh, dr s lakshmi narayanan garu the chairman i trade vaisa bay section and uh, subsequently the other office people uh, then uh, professor dr narayana murthy tumala uh, who is also chairman uh, uh, kamini iwd communication and signal process uh, vaisak bay section and uh, other is bearers of this, uh, that uh, joint uh, society chapter then 
Dr. M. V. Subbarao Garu. Uh, he is also a faculty active, I triply volunteer member of that uh, chapter. And other participants, invitees. Once again, I extend a warm good evening to all the people. And uh, let me let me share my slide, and subsequently I will get into the topic. Uh, uh, Professor Namurthy, I can share it now. Yes, sir. You can share, sir. I already made you presenter, sir. Yeah, you can okay. share. You can start sharing. Okay. Uh, is it visible? Yes, sir. Our slides are visible. Yeah. Uh, thank I'm standing you. After thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, again, uh, uh, this topic, uh, understanding optical solutions for 5G and beyond 5G, uh, particularly 6G, uh, I have put in the, in the parenthesis, there is a constraint. Uh, of course, I am affiliated to the Department of Electronic Engineering, School of Engineering and Technology, Pondicherry University. This is my mail ID. Uh, you could able to throw your uh, clarifications or doubts if you have anything after hearing my presentation later freely. Therefore, I could able to communicate a detailed answer to you. I understand that this period is only for 40, 50 minutes uh, I am given. Within that, uh, this is very difficult to cover this vast version of the topic, optical solutions for beyond 5G. But however, I will make my attempt. If not a critical presentation on the topic concerned, I would like to provide a very surface and a, a comprehensive idea how the optical solutions would be useful for 5G and beyond 5G. And before I get into the technical aspect of this uh, uh, presentation, the understanding is a very, very uh, difficult uh, uh, word. Understanding the word of understanding itself is very difficult because to understand something, one might have to go beyond what is just written and taught. Normally, if you take, we used to say study, listen, then understand, realize, enlightenment, that the thing goes. Enlightenment is a very big word. Of course, we know there are many people across the world in India itself uh, have enlightened themselves by doing a very meticulous uh, way of uh, uh, procedures. So uh, I look at this word understanding also in the series of that line, but very primitive and rudimentary one. It's not that much high standard uh, level. It is very, very but it is suddenly about the study. So therefore, I was very particular about the terminology in giving the title, understanding. But now, as I told you earlier, I will, I will try to provide a very surface level of uh, conceptual idea on the topic to the audience concerned. If you have any doubt, you can post through chat box or through the coordinators at the end of the presentation. Therefore, I would be in a position to clarify your doubts. Before I get into that, I would like to acknowledge uh, many people. Uh, first and foremost, the IEEE BISAC and the communication and signal processing subject. And of course, I have referred many content all the contents are taken from the literature available pertinent to the topic. Some other industry uh, forums. Uh, I have not worked anything on this area, but I have a very theoretical, strong conceptual idea. So therefore, I would like to acknowledge all those people contributed earlier in the form of journals, conference proceedings. They helped me a lot to prepare this uh, content. Of course, I would like to mention the particular uh, Subarao. Uh, with him only, I could be able to uh, contact you people. Therefore, I also take opportunity to acknowledge him also at this point. Then, uh, I'll, of course, the Almighty, that is uh, probably during the presentation, I will refer him also now and then. 
this is what my presentation schedule sectorization of the flow let me take what are the requirements of 5g and 5g beyond and uniqueness the nature of optical spectrum in the electromagnetic field different types of optical wireless communications all of optical wireless communication in next generation wireless networks the impact how it provides solution to the future challenges of the optical wireless communication in the 5g and 6g and of course iot solutions finally i will conclude with a couple of uh, statements if you see it is going to be a coin with the six sides it is not uh, two sides so you have to bear me uh, the other four sides what are the requirements of 5g and 5g beyond you would have seen in many other presentations uh, or somewhere other content these are all the envision of evolving fifth generation wireless networks which is envisioned to provide higher data rate thousand times more than the 4g enhance end user quality of experience quality of service we used to say but quality of experience is the topic of uh, this envision reduce end to end latency less than 1 milliseconds if you take the satellite communication of course i wanted to mention that also in the acknowledgement i somehow uh, uh, the time constraint i couldn't able to recollect but the latency made me to recollect that today we are very proud to stand as an indian uh, but for the launch of the pslv uh, 49c uh, that is a, a um, satellite uh, i mean the vehicle pslv vehicle is carrying the satellite evos yet to orbit uh, uh, satellite evos 1 it is uh, pslv in the 51st pslv series uh, successfully launched so if you take the kind of satellite it is not the geo it is uh, uh, definitely in the pslv uh, series therefore the latency is going to be less but if you take the latency in the case of uh, geo uh, uh, geo uh, satellite it is going to be 800 milliseconds up to uh, various communication uh, everything has its own latency in the 4g or the 3g if you take it is going to be 20 milliseconds but what is being expected is that the latency end to end that should be less than 1 millisecond uh, please remember the latency it is associated or it is a measure of delay of course the jitter is a different concept everybody knows variation in the delay is called jitter and we are not talking about jitter we are talking about latency to take any electromagnetic spectrum the the speed or the velocity of that carrier is going to be constant that is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second but how do you how do you reduce in the wireless scenario are it through the cable that we are going to attempt the latency for a particular system is going to be less than 1 millisecond very very uh, challenging task then fourth one is lowering the energy consumption yes every day i don't want to recharge the battery concerned of my mobile or any electronic gadgets very frequently that recharge inter interval time must be very long so the power consumption the consumption in a chosen device in a system should be as low as possible then reliability and security they should be improved a lot reliability is very very big challenge with respect to the wireless scenario security when it it is a wireless security concern is more yes prone to tap anybody we are going to secure that these are all the challenges of course emission made towards the fifth generation 
the target period for fifth generation is 2020 this year is across the world some countries already started to implement uh, in some places the spectrums are being actioned so uh, of course in our part we have not yet realized that with this ambition of uh, 5g let us move on to the other uh, concept before that please remember these improvements are not hazardous to ecosystem and living beings that also we have to take into account other development happening to provide a technological revolution evolution it should not be the hazardous to the ecosystem concern and living beings you would have witnessed many situations or many cases health hazards due to the rf radio communication signal irritations the small sparrow like things have gone all those things are the consequence of technological developments but we have to have technological development without affecting any of the ecosystem that is what we are looking the primary technologies yes those objectives of 5g 6g how are you going to meet what are the technologies available what are the approaches with which you could able to meet those requirements of 5g densification of existing cellular networks with the massive addition of small cells micro cells femtocells and provision for peer to peer communication device to device machine to machine person to person vehicle to vehicle vehicle to everything everything to everything iot is also coming so densification of existing cellular networks please remember when we talk about dens densification obviously the coverage range of base station concerned in a cell is going to be very small if you talk about the very old second generation or third generation uh, second generation the coverage distance is in the order of tens of kilometer probably 35 to 40 kilometer coverage 3g it was a lawyer 4g still lowered 5g we are looking 20 meters distance and beyond 5g probably it is going to be in the order of a single digit meter maybe within a room many base stations can be installed so thus thus it demands densification of cellular network densification i mean to say that the base station population therefore the population of cellular concept then second approach with which you could able to meet those visions of 5g and 6g is simultaneous transmission and reception full duplex communication best example that very difficult to realize people are attempting to realize but the challenge is one frequency with which i want to have a bidirectional communication without interference the communication people you being a communication people many of you are this participants are students but for them please remember you know interference happens when we play around with the same frequency otherwise there is no problem at all the same medium when we transmit uh, uh, uplink as well as downlink with the same frequency obviously interference will result but full duplex is going to adopt that uh, technique and the consequence interference will be resolved that is what the beauty so thus please remember not only it is improving all the things whatever uh, i said in the previous slide it also helps to effectively utilize the spectrum therefore our spectrum is very constrained therefore the excess spectrum can be assigned for some other base station our frequency use will be improvised then 
massive mimo the mimo is taking different variants millimeter wave technology coming up very very effectively and optical wireless communication these technologies will pay a very good way to reach those ambitions this session emphasize only the optical wireless communication and improved energy efficiency energy aware communication energy harvesting techniques with associated protocols help these 5g and 6g to reach their requirements then cloud based radio access network cr c ram it is not a radio access network c ram that kind of modified concept rrh dbu the split of digital analog unit away from the station and the amalgamation of all common entity keeping them in one place will help the system to improvise their functional characteristics whatever i mentioned earlier then finally virtualization of wireless resources virtualization is also helping slicing of wireless resources slicing of a network itself slicing of network itself which mean you could able to provide a privileged data rate privileged functions or functional parameters to a particular group who are all seeking such kind of function so these are all the some of the technique uh, technologies and approaches with which the envision of 5g 6g would be materialized is no doubt the list is not limited still some more things are there like if i say cloud computing or for computing they are all extension of your rf concept quantum computing is a new one which is coming up photonics integrated circuit the domain which is heavily coming up that is paving a way to realization of optical computers optical computer history is well known but somehow it was not picking up with what intention it was started but quantum computing is coming up in a big way probably very soon that would be the talk of the technical platform why 6g research is starting before we realize 5g the most obvious starting points are the speed and spectrum and yes i want to reach that 6g i want to reach beyond that that competitiveness with which people work the speed with which we are going to realize the uh, services the spectrum which we are going to use all the things are making the people to go one step ahead before realizing the present normally that is the case which we being a student uh, would have realized when we study btech we will dream about the mtech we may, we may not concentrate the present we dream always the future if you want to build a very strong future you must concentrate the present properly that it is not happening in the real life the same thing is also happening in the technical arena and for that is diluting their message about 5g and their ability to make money from 5g please remember 5g for people like us it is a technical technical platform but for many people service provider it is a business so they lose please ensure we do not burn down the planet in the process ig 6g radiation so many radiation and if you if you if you if you look at now uh, added to that covid 19 corona i don't know second wave is coming up at uh, some places abroad some countries are facing and lockdown started india luckily we don't have second wave so far and what else is going to come in the near future nobody knows 
all the things, do you think that it is because of the nature? No, it's not because of nature. It is because of the creature, nature creature, we. We spoil the atmosphere. We spoil planet. We spoil everything. Therefore, the consequence is this kind of results. So you do whatever you want, but without affecting anybody else in the world, anybody else in the universe. So to ensure we do not burn down the planet in the process of evolution. Beyond 5G and 6G, what are the expectations? It is a substitute of the second slide, which I was mentioning earlier, 6G. You see that extreme low latency, less than one millisecond, extreme high reliability, close to 100%, very high security, safety, resilience, of course. For reliable low latency communication, this is what the URLLC, Ultra reliable low latency communication, massive machine type communication, small m, capital TC, MMTC, massive machine type communication, and enhanced to mobile broadband. Broadband, I would like to re realize when I am on the move. All these three things are the major additions of your. 6G expectations through these functional parameters, extreme massive connectivity. You see that the 10 million connection per kilometer, square kilometer, with the sensing capabilities of high precision, precision positioning in the order of a centimeter. You know the satellite resolution is one meter, meter. But what we are looking is in centimeter. If I have a, uh, if I show two fingers, I could be able to visualize whether which is left or which is right. Such a resolution, such a precision is possible through the sensing or imaging. Then extreme low energy and cost. Yes, it is. it should be made available like your audition, air, water. It should not be like your electricity. It should not, it should not be like your bus fare or petrol. And the, the, the network bit per uh, cost, that should be as low as possible. Sorry, cost per bit should be as low as possible. So low energy, it should consume low energy. So there are some new spectrum identified to provide these facilities. There are some devices, uh, they are free from battery charging. Once if you install the battery, that's all. Throughout the lifetime, not necessary to charge. Thanks to the battery technology, uh, lithium batteries and so many va variants or varieties are coming up. And the extreme coverage is yes. uh, into the sky. Please remember the coverage even within the, uh, 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 what I can say, the integrated circuits, there are some coupling between one module to another module that is in the order of nanometer. I can say the extreme coverage. The coverage varies from nanometer to 1,000 kilometer or beyond that. Intercepted communication distance is going to be in the order of thousands of kilometers or 10,000 kilometers. Then extreme high data rate, 100 gigabits per second, more than that we need at, as a peak data rate. And this is uh, possible with the help of your uh, uh, previous uh, technologies, whatever put forth. A necessity leads to invention. Yes, my greediness to have all the parameters making me to invent a very nice 6G, but ensure again, invention we know. A, A to illness, yes, badly affects that. As an engineer, we are all the application people of fundamental sciences. The engineer, I believe we could be able to make a very cost effective one, but the concept of cost effective has gone. We have to make eco-friendly system. 
we have to make system which is very conducive for the human beings. I request all participants, please put your mind towards such kind of objective. Another one, Internet of Things. There are many definitions available on literature for the Internet of Things. It is also part and partial and beyond 5G. I can say this is serving uh, the devices to generate, exchange, consume data with the minimal human intervention. Many definitions are there, you can refer them. I have given uh, some one such a definition here. It's uh, forecasted that within 2025, 5 billion cellular IoT connections will be made available. And the billion purchase for the ISP provider, this would be the target uh, amount in the year 2026 through 5G industry. This is all the different one. Of course, many variances are coming up. Uh, industrial internet of things, medical domain internet, even uh, underwater internet, you take internet, different applications, its own IoT is being introduced with its nomenclature. That is what I have mentioned in the highlight. Many variants of IoTs are coming up. Some factual, whatever I observed over the technical uh, papers, I wanted to share with you they are associated with 5G and 6G, something like 4K, high definition streaming. You go for TV purchase, Deepavali, people uh, uh, are fond of purchasing some good things for the houses. TV, 4K TV. The resolution we are talking about, 3840 by uh, close to 2000 pixels. Resolution is four times higher than your HD TV, high definition TV. Then augmented reality that is connected to interactive experience of the real world. Virtual reality, it is connected to the simulated experience of real world. Tactile internet, it provides sense of touchability. All these things are the very, very uh, frequently used technical uh, uh, nomenclatures in the technical papers. But how do we realize? Yes, through this kind of technologies. Applications of AI, artificial intelligence, keep on increasing. Yes, we do that. Please remember, I used to say to my students, Artificial intelligence is keep on is keeping on increasing, deteriorating the actual intelligence of the human. We should not allow the intelligence to deteriorate, which is naturally available to the human system. I don't know whether you are accepting this statement or not, but definitely you will rethink when you have time to think. I repeat once again, we increase the artificial intelligence on, on non-living entities, our devices, our systems. Yes, by deteriorating our own intelligence. This is done through intelligence. There is no second thought. But I, I feel personally we are losing our own intelligence, which is available naturally. It should not be. There are some requirements. High bandwidth connectivity is required to realize those factuals, those uh, phenomena. Enhanced mobile broadband services, that is what EMBB I said earlier. This is being attempted to provide to ITU and another one, next generation mobile network, NGM. These are all the standard bodies which are working and providing 
standardization to realize EMBB. Some key performance indicators, data rate already mentioned, one gigabits per second, and the peak rate of 20 expected to have. The 6G, it is 100 gigabits per second, more than that. Latency, 10 milliseconds, less than that. In the case of 6G, 6, uh, gen, sixth generation, less than 1 milliseconds. All, all the uh, other two also I told, densities, capacity. We meet them. We said that those technologies will help us to realize all these uh, functional properties, functional parameters. All these attributes are very possible to realize. How do we meet them? We don't think that the existing spectrum, RF spectrum will provide all these things alone. Limitations. For RF, uh, in case of IoT or 5G. Find about the big data, we are, on, we are not computing people, we are all communication people by assuming that. It's about big bandwidth. Who is providing big bandwidth? RF spectrum. What is RF spectrum? You take spectrum from kilometer, I mean, kilohertz range to 300 gigahertz. Even if I take just above the DC, I can say that the spectrum of our RF is, the bandwidth for RF is, only 300 gigahertz. What is that I am going to get? So many standards, so many services, so many technologies within that spectrum. Crowded, you see the right side, so much crowded. But what we need to realize the previous slide conceptualizes, we need big bandwidth. That is why we are percolating our thing into terahertz, IR, and visible light, optical spectrum. They have very huge bandwidth that we will see the another slide. This already I told, 2G 35 kilometers, 3G 5 kilometers, 4G 100 meters, 5G 25 meters, and beyond that, if you look at it, it's very less distance among the base stations. And imagine that how we are going to reduce the size still further, the cell size. It is very difficult with available spectrum. Because, of course, we, if, you, if you reduce the uh, distance among the base station, frequency we use will be improvised. Cast will be another side. The infrastructure, what you are going to install for the base station is going to be, again, uh, high. Because number of base stations are more, therefore the cost is going to be more. But on the other side, frequency reuse is improved, can be improved. There is much concern about possible radio technology effects in sensitive areas like health, medical, or wherever hospital, we have to be careful. What is the solution? The available RF spectrum is not enough. But the technological evolution is uh, taking us to have a scene. The distance among the base stations is going to be very, very small. How are we going to meet? We need big bandwidth. Of course, big data is, data is available. Big bandwidth we need to transmit those data. What is the solution? Keep this question also in your mind. If you have time, you can think over that. Before I proceed to the solution for those, I would like to witness of the key advantages of optical spectrum. Listed in the slide, before that, this picture is basically a spectrum of electromagnetic domain. Extreme left, you see that R of uh, subsequently IR, visible light, ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma ray. Only I have uh, chosen or put uh, a limited one. The previous, the other side are not so. So we concern this visible light. Visible light is varying from 
350 nanometer to 750 nanometer wavelength it is in the order of uh, petahertz 300 terahertz to around 15 petahertz uh, that is the wavelength with which we beta in the sense uh, 10 power 15 uh, sorry 10 power 18 and this spectrum optical spectrum is license free you take of course there are some unlicensed spectra given in the rf very very little but if you take the entire spectrum that entire spectrum is license free it provides a huge not huge ultra huge bandwidth which was sought by the big data in the earlier slide security is very high Provision to limit interference is also potentially very high. Energy efficient. Lighting devices to service and light as a service. There is a concept LAA capital S NAS. Lighting devices to service and light as service. So coming up, these are all the some key advantages associated with the optical Otherwise, these, these factors, these attributes are not found, are not there in the RF. Let us worship the sun, the ultimate source of energy. Why? Because from, from him only, the optical spectrum is coming up. Most, of course, all electromagnetic spectrum is responsible, but the optical we could be able to see visible with GR. So let us worship the sun for providing us the ultimate mm -hmm. source of energy. Energy, of course, we don't have capacity to consume energy I, I mean, uh, to prepare starch directly from the sunlight through the process of photosynthesis. But we make use of the plant or uh, vegeta vegetables uh, uh, that we call uh, flora, flora system to provide the required starch from the sun. But that energy is being provided by the sun. Uh, that is what we are with GR. So, Well, history, if you uh, see the right side, this is uh, Graham Bell, uh, who has demonstrated uh, many things. Uh, telephone, we say, but before telephone, in the year 1880, he was the first person to demonstrate uh, optical wireless communication. He transmitted voice over uh, 200 meters with the sunlight. It is not LED or laser diode. Through sunlight, he demonstrated that. What he did is uh, sunlight was reflected by a vibrating mirror. There is a vibrating mirror. That mirror is connected to the microphone. So you speak, your audio signal will vibrate that mirror. Mirror will be vibrating. Then in accordance with the vibration of the mirror, sunlight reflected will be oscillated. That is received at the receiver side with the selenium uh, cell in the center uh, with the parabolic mirror that in turn could be able to convert that into electrical signal. That signal is fed into the loudspeaker and through that uh, he could be able to transport voice through a light as a carrier and through open channel. It was in the year 1880. Imagine that now we are talking about that kind of uh, fascinating technology as an alternative for RF. Or it is not alternative, it is complement. It is complement technology for RF. Therefore, these two will go hand to hand. It is a high resultant hybrid technique is the technique that could able to provide whatever we talk about in the earlier slides. So about 20 years later, era of uh, light emitting diodes started then after 100 years later people started to have wireless data communication by using artificial 
light emitting diodes, not as uh, uh, sunlight as carrier. So I salute this great inventor who made a history, who made a path to have wireless optical communication very long back, 1880 itself. Subsequently, in the year 1962, radio LED was invented thanks to the Polanyak. 1980, IR based wireless network interconnects between the distributed computers. 1993, blue LED uh, that was uh, challenging for the technical people, uh, invented by Nakamura et al. group. And white LED was introduced in the year 2000. And, uh, it changed the entire application landscape of LEDs from signaling devices to illumination devices. Earlier, it was used only as a pilot lamp, pilot uh, indicator. Now, signaling device to illumination, everywhere on the street, you, have, uh, you can witness this kind of uh, LED lamp. But now, the transformation is happening. It is not only illuminating device, it is also communicating device besides illumination. That is what the talk is. Uh, 2000, visible light communication was also experimentally done with the help of white LED. What are the different types of optical wireless communications? So what I did so far, I narrated the challenges, uh, the requirements uh, envisioned by 5G and 6G. What are the technological things are just available to reach them? And uh, what is your optical spectrum? There is a connectivity between the requirements uh, of 5G, 6G, the technology associated the optical spectrum. And with that, we are going to meet those requirements. And that is making the people to go for this kind of different optical communications. In simple, I can say OWC. It is a promising candidate for serving the demands of 5G and 5GB. No second thought. There are four main optical wireless communication technologies, namely, Visible light, light fidelity, Li-Fi. The first one is VLC, optical camera communication, OCC, free space optics, FSO. These four communication technologies under OWCs are very, very important. This picture is showing all of them, different occasions, different applications, towards 5G and IoT to realize those platforms. You can have what type of communication you want. For example, device to device, mission to mission, chip to chip, satellite to satellite, point to point, point to multipoint, multipoint to multipoint, what not, vehicle to vehicle, Infrastructure to vehicle or vehicle to infrastructure, I can say anything to anything, E to E, that is also possible. That such a fantastic provision is associated with this spectrum. One step ahead, what is that your VLC? Of course. When I say communication system, there are four inevitable entities. Transmitter, receiver, the medium, three. Fourth one is the information which is to be transmitted from transmitter to the receiver. That information is invisible right now with respect to this picture. So in what way these four technologies of uh, optical wireless communications are different with respect to these subsystem of communication system? Transmitter, if you take in the case of VLC, it could be LED or LD. Media, please remember open space is the medium, but whether the carrier is visible light or IR or ultraviolet, that it varies from one technology to another technology. 
receiver, whether it is a photo detector, photodiode, or something else. Of course, transmitter, either it could be LED or laser diode. Sometimes it is going to be a diffused laser diode, or it could be array of LED. Medium, it could be visible light, or IR, UV, in the case of life file. And this is going to be IR sometimes. UV also can be used in the case of FSO. And mainly at the other side, all these technologies will adopt PD except camera, except your optical camera communication, wherein it is going to adopt only camera. It is a CMOS camera, CMOS technology. Please remember this OCP is a by the it is not a bidirectional communication, it is a unidirectional communication. Besides that, the remaining three are bidirectional. You can make unidirectional in some cases that you can able to witness very clearly in this tabular column. What are the issues? What is this VLC, LIFI, OCC, FSO? Topology, as I said, it is a bidirectional or unidirectional. This is a must be bidirectional, LIFI. It is a light fidelity, like wireless fidelity with the light carrier we could able to provide. Then it is, uh, as I told earlier, unidirectional. FSO, it can be bidirectional, unidirectional. This distance covered, mobility, interference level, data rate. Main purpose, what for this? You see, not only for communication, you can go for illumination, Localization, imaging, all these things, whatever essentially required the processes for the human system in various applications can be met by these technologies. Modulation techniques, a well established one. Of course, you could see CSK. Uh, CSK um, present contest, it is not uh, uh, Chennai Super King. Of course, it is uh, color system. Keying, color shift keying. Other uh, modulations are known to you, but the color shift keying is something like your wavelength uh, modulation, wavelength is modulation. All these uh, optical wireless, uh, uh, those four technologies helping or providing solutions for the 5G, 6G. First of all, why do we choose? this optical wireless communication. As I told earlier, please remember, 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz is the RF band, the electromagnetic spectrum. Roughly, it is going to be 300 gigahertz bandwidth. That is not sufficient. Of course, almost exhausted already, it is insufficient to provide the higher demand of 5G, 6G, IoT networks. We have witnessed whatever I told. All of them are demanding a huge bandwidth, high data rate, low latency, low power consumption. Of course, all those remaining leave it bandwidth and data rate, bandwidth that is not possible to provide by this RF band. Therefore, we go for optical wireless communication. Sorry. One minute. The optical wireless communication can be used for wide range of applications, machine to machine. Yeah, like IoT, you can you can you can establish this communication wherever you want in this sense. All of them can be accomplished using with the appropriate optical wireless communication technologies. Light not only allows connectivity over various ranges. Please remember various ranges in the sense the coverage distance it varies from nanometer to 10,000 kilometers. 10,000 kilometer I mean to say that satellite to satellite communication. Nanometer, I would say, inter-chip communication or within intra-chip communication. The things are told here. According to the time I am going. 
It can also provide high data rate communication link. Please remember, connectivity range, requirement of the bandwidth, data rate. I hope you could able to recollect the difference among all these terminologies. The other key features of optical wireless communication include high unregulated bandwidth, high level of security, low power consumption, low infrastructure and device cost, no interference with the RF device and the networks, high achievable SNR, OSNR, easy integration into existing lighting infrastructure systems. All these things are advantages. Please look at, I could be able to have a very various range. I could be able to have ultra high bandwidth, very high data rate. All these things are associated with your spectrum. That is not seen in the RF so far, but optical domain, visible spectrum could be able to provide these features. Why not? Therefore, we go for optical wireless communication. Please, these are all inherent properties of the spectrum associated in the electromagnetic. You explore them, tap them, use them, enjoy them. Another thing, the natural light is the light, visible light. Whatever we receive the light is the white light, which includes all color, all colors. If we make use of those light for our communication purpose, I feel personally no harm will happen. Rather, you generate one oscillator by using very high frequency in the order of gigahertz. That frequency is not at all found in the universe. We only generate. Otherwise, available is available. Additionally, we generate. Therefore, it is an additional oscillation to the universe, atmosphere, that oscillation never stops, never stops. You know, to generate electromagnetic wave, we need all these things. Once if it is generated to sustain, we don't need source. It will sustain for quite a long time. So, that is making people to think, why not we use these optical wireless communication technologies to harvest all these things. But of course, there are some couple of issues associated. The most important limitation of the optical wireless communication system is the blocking of transmission by obstacles. Because this is working or this is demanding line of sight, whereas RF it is not so. But for the LOS, if you have any obstacle between transmitter and receiver, you may not receive, you cannot receive, but that can be overcome. That is what the challenge of engineers. The coexistence of RF and optical wireless communication can effectively solve most of the limitations of individual RF-based and optical wireless communication-based. What I mean to say is that this obstacle is the problem in the case of optical. That can be overcome if you have a hybrid RF within the system. RF bandwidth is the problem that can be solved if you have optical wireless communication as a coexistence. So in your system, you have to have both. Even if you take wireless system, optical wireless communication, fog, scintillation, other attributes of channel or bottlenecks, problematic issues. But for RF, fog is not an issue. It is easily overcome. So whenever you have fog more than acceptable level, you enable invoke RF system of your system. Through RF you communicate. Only it is to retain and extend the communication. Consistently provide the communication link, I am asking that we can establish. Whenever the fog is acceptable level, you invoke optical wireless communication system, switch off RF. 
So you can have a mode, switch over mode, provisioning. Through the provisioning system, you can switch over to RF or optical wireless communication. Not only that, these optical wireless communications are fulfilling the service quality characteristics. What are the service quality characteristics? High volume of capacity. The band of optical, 300 gigahertz to 30 petahertz. Most if you take uh, uh, around 27 petahertz, the, the bandwidth is very large, whereas RF bandwidth is only 300 gigahertz. Ultra high user data rate. I'll be told. It is very low, but we are looking 100 gigabits per second or more than that in the order of terabits. It could be able to provide. Please remember, data rate is, uh, uh, it is not associated with the bandwidth. The bandwidth is something like, uh, what is the capacity to carry the data? But data rate, the modulation techniques, the pulse, you transmit the de designs. What is the de pulse width? What is the modulation technique or coding technique we use at the transmitter? They define the data rate. But of course, we look for more spectral efficiency. The spectral capacity or spectral efficiency, uh, what we have is less than uh, 10, one digit, uh, probably. Fractional earlier we had, and now we, uh, we have come to three, four, something like that. But 5G, we are looking 30, uh, 4G, we are looking 30 or 20 plus, and 5G, we are looking for 150 plus or 200. 6G, it is expected still more. What is the spectral uh, efficiency I'm talking about? It is how many bits per second per hertz you are holding. You are allowing to transmit number of bits per hertz per second. That's what it is the measure of your capacity in the data rate. That decides the density. What is the density? Something similar to that number of bits per unit area per hertz. How much you are allowing them to float over the unit area? More the density, yes, more the efficiency, people say, technically. True. But please remember, that much power revolving around our brain, what will happen to the brain? What will happen to our own natural radiations? We also radiate. We are part of our natural system. We also antenna, act as an antenna. What will happen to our reception? What will happen to our transmission? One side, we look for that kind of uh, high density, high spectral efficiency, capacity. Yes, what will happen to them if we allow them to happen? But I believe if they are with nature, natural light capacity is more, nothing will happen because we, we used it. For RF, it is very, very uh, not uh, uh, useful, it is unusual. Ultra low latency, please remember, the light communication, wireless communication is uh, always through line of sight. Line of sight is always the shortest part. Whereas the R of communication, it also goes line of sight, but uh, some many things are non-line of sight, the result is combination of both. Non-line of sight is never uh, entertain the shortest part. So, therefore, the low, uh, ultra low latency is always a very good uh, functional characteristics uh, possible to obtain with the help of your optical domain rather than the other one. In ultra low energy consumption, please remember what is my R of source later. Crystal oscillator, electron, reflex cluster, traveling wave tube, so many. 
But what I need to have this uh, optical lasing, LED, worst case laser diode. What is the power consumption of this laser diode? Very low. The power can, uh, not only that, the counterpart at the receiver side, that also consumes, the LED sensor consumes very little energy compared to RF sensors. RF sensors, they consume more relatively. I am talking about electrical power consumption. The LED can also be used simultaneously to illuminate the particular room concerned besides communication. I am meeting the dual purpose, but in the RF it is not so. Reliable connectivity, but reliability is the question mark in the case of uh, life itself. Uncertainties are more, but uh, over the uncertainties, we could see the certainty, something like infinite, or when I say a period, a periodic signal, I could see a periodicity in the a periodic signal. The periodicity is very small. Similarly, I could see a very good reliable in the electromagnetic portion of this, uh, some narrow spectrum optical, there high level of OSNR is possible. Sorry, OSNR, yes, optical signal to noise ratio. Signal strength is more, thus it provides a high reliability. Ultra high security. Please remember, this light fellow cannot penetrate the obstacle. Therefore, the people, those who are standing outside the room cannot track the information. Therefore, highly secure. Outside, it is not possible. If you break, then the entire link is broken, whereas RF, it is not so easy. You can tap. When signal is going on, you can tap this information and you can do whatever you want by receiving the signal. You can understand what is being sent. But optical, once if you block, if you tap, the link is broken, then no more communication established between transmitter and receiver. Thus, it ensures the security to a large extent, so-called ultra-high security. This couple of slides are talking about quality characteristics of the Now, these optical wireless communications meeting the network and infrastructure characteristics. What are the network and infrastructure characteristics? Densification. Heterogeneous network, yes, possible. Please remember, in your room, normally you used to have more than one lamp. Maybe tube light, tungsten light, maybe LED light, maybe uh, conceived light, etc. Et Each light is one base station. Thus, we can be able to densify. But you, in your house, you may have only one wireless access point in the case of RF. So by naturally, this system, this domain of uh, uh, technology is uh, facilitating densification. Multi-tier architecture and convergence of heterogeneous network is possible. Yes, one over another, different technologies you can amalgamate. This is uh, very well going with this. Provision of hybrid network connectivity. This I told RF with optical wireless communication. Optical wireless communication with RF, both are possible, hybrid. Massive device connectivity, already I told you can connect any type of communication using this optical carrier, ranging from nanometer to 10,000 or more than that. Starting from machine to, I mean chip to chip, or one module of chip, intra chip to satellite to satellite, anything. Mass, thus, it is provi providing massive uh, connectivity. Small cell concept is possible. Third generation, uh, they talk about macro cell. Fourth generation, they talk about the small cell micro cell. Fifth generation, they talk about ultra dense small cell with the macro cell network. The ultra dense small cell is possible through this light as this. Seamless movement, yes, without any obstacle. 
without any obstruction seamlessly you can able to communicate to the destination from the transmission from the trans uh, sorry from the transmitter high capacity backhaul network of course front hall is uh, uh, access to the access network point to your uh, device equipment user device backhaul from the access point to the core network that is called the backhaul there the fso can be deployed as a uh, complementary solution to the what is existing so called the microwave thus you could able to improvise the capacity of the backhaul otherwise this side access network to the user equipment we could able to have optical carrier the bandwidth is very large data rate is very high but the bottleneck the backhaul if you have constraint in terms of bandwidth and data you cannot communicate the data on which you play to the core network so the this fso is the potential solution provider at the backhaul that is access network point to core network that region is called the backhaul network network infrastructure the characteristics continues green communication that is what i used to say a conducive ambience to have a communication i want to communicate with anybody at any time at everywhere at any place with acceptable level of taste is possible with this light rather than other one i can have yeah, some protocol development like energy awareness choice of communication devices and uh, harvesting the energy out of this uh, natural ambience i can i can go with the solar cell concept integrate that with the vlc and communicate uh, uh, that system uh, never anticipating any charging of battery because you have solar cell it takes energy from nature harvest energy and provide electricity to the system to the government to the neighbor that is also possible you get the amount from them you will be paid the indian indian system indian government has the kind of regulation but many of us are not knowing it please remember ne if you have your solar system in your house if you harvest more power than what you consume the extra power you can sell it to the government and for that you will be paid you can take money out of that but you have to you have to invest that initially solar panel you have to invest so that is default here it is available default available green communication is the communication possible with the help of your optical wireless communication tactile internet support tactile telecommunication defines it is uh, internet as a, a, a tactile internet as the future internet that combines ultra low latency as i told in the 6g u r l l ultra reliable low latency with the extremely high availability reliability and security that kind of uh, net internet tactile it is associated with the feel of touch it is the next evolution of iot it can converse human to machine machine to machine interaction please remember machine to machine is okay human to machine is also okay what we do with computer is machine human to machine but it is not the man made without our knowledge we have to communicate that is what the need of ours that is possible with the tactile internet when i thought when i think to open the particular file it should be opened when i want to switch on something it should be done when i want to close a system it should be done without my physical interference that is what the human to machine communication towards that it is evolving but is it possible through this yes it is also possible it is a one uh, small picture high capacity backhaul connectivity for remote hill station uh, sea island then uh, 
city to the uh, uh, backhaul, as I said, the access point to the core network. Intelligent transportation is another uh, network and infrastructure characteristics also met by this optical wireless communication. ESRC concept, uh, dedicated short range communication that can be replaced which is operating in 5.9 gigahertz band, it can be uh, overcome by your uh, OWC technology, which is basically last condition. You can support very well. Of course, uh, I will leave the slide to the organizers, uh, uh, those two participants, those who are interested, can do them leisurely in detail all the lines. Uh, according to the time factor, I am skipping some of these points. Come on, uh, coming on to the applications of this industry 4.0 is everywhere. It is uh, there. Water communication, all the things uh, are some uh, use cases. 4.0, you see that it is elimination. To that you could able to have a robo communication, robo to mission communication, mission to mission communication. All these things are possible. 4.0 demands many of such conditions. Underwater communication, please remember underwater communication, acoustic medium is the best medium with which you can communicate, but uh, 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 light is facilitating acoustic communication up to some extent, uh, like this you can have up to this uh, light communication from here to here it is acoustic communication. and. Uh, from here to the base station, it is going to be FSO or other communication you can have. Autonomous transport. Uh, yes, you see that the street light with which you can have communication, not only to the individual, uh, you can establish the communication to the vehicle. vehicle. Vehicle to vehicle is also possible. So street, uh, street lab or this kind of uh, infrastructure, uh, roadside infrastructure, not only infrastructure, they also used to, to communicate useful data to the stakeholders. Aviation industry, you imagine that you could be able to have Li-Fi within the flight. Uh, this also Li-Fi, FSO is there between the uh, flight pilot to the ground station, you can have. But, uh, any obstacle comes, the problem is there. RF is always um, coexisting with that. Presently available in some places. This is uh, expected to happen within the flight, Wi Fi, like Wi Fi, it is Wi Fi. Aviation industry, disaster management. If yeah, something happened in some places, how do we establish uh, communication? Yeah, we can have ad hoc. So this uh, optical wireless communication is very easier to establish in terms of uh, uh, simplicity, ad hoc basis manner at any place, at any time. What we need is very small transmitter receiver. The time taken to establish is going to be maybe of minutes, not hour of hours. Whereas the other uh, domain requires very high period of uh, time. Health monitoring too, yes. Please remember, uh, uh, because of your other uh, uh, RF devices, uh, electromagnetic interference is more with the biological systems, electronic biological systems available. Electronics helping biological system, I mean to say that, biological uh, electronic system. But if your uh, signal is going to be received from optical carrier, there is no magnetic interference or electromagnetic interference. That's the, Hospital is free from interference. That's what uh, very great advantage the, with the help of health monitoring system. Of course, the smart cities, uh, you see that uh, this kind of uh, public carrier house, your uh, station and building all you can have, uh, uh, not only the lighting, lighting with uh, communication, dual purpose, so you can have 
This is one base station, another base station, another base station, so many base stations, densification, establishment of what we need for future communication is possible, future network is possible. Thus, smart city itself is smart. Education. Yes, now we play around. Many times we switch off video, but for the bad with the conservation. Uh, if we do with uh, uh, optical domain, I think bandwidth is not a problem. We can have a very pleasant face, face-to-face -face communication. Future we may have that. Augmented, yeah, one IIT convocation happened, no? Chennai IIT already demonstrated how nicely they did that. There, the technology, you see the beautiful concept they virtual mode of uh, convocation they conducted. The student came there virtually, received the degree virtually, and disappeared. There is, it is there, but it is not there. But to realize such condition, technology is possible. This domain will definitely support along with the other domain to realize. Heterogeneous network, yes, you see that, Li-Fi is here, VLC is here, and uh, FSO is here. All these things can be coupled to MBS and then to cloud, then from cloud to core network, of course, gateway from through that, we can reach the core network. So heterogeneous network, not only this, you can have RF also, RF also along with this. Li-Fi, this person, just I wanted to uh, make use of this slide to uh, give regard to this uh, Professor Harald Haas, uh, who invented this life file, or coined, invented, invention is not correct terminology. He coined this uh, life file. In the year 2020, it is expected uh, 6 billion uh, US, UK dollars. Just already I told, I can skip some of the Li-Fi devices. I would like to Li-Fi bulb access point client device USB Li-Fi. This is uh, how Li-Fi through lamp is connected and uh, enabled mobile. This is uh, LED lamp with the driver. This is your enable lamp. Hybrid, as I said, you see that this is RF, this is optical. Whenever you have optical, some channel impairments, that time you could make use of this. Otherwise, normally this is what acts as in standby. To provide consistency in the link, this hybrid concept, Li-Fi, Wi-Fi. So the system is happy every time you can have, always. The future concept is uh, solar life. You see, this is uh, past. This is what uh, the recent future is going to be this. You can make use of the solar power uh, to enable as a source of life. So sun provides continuously the energy. The future is going to be this line. So around 85% of electricity you can be able to harvest out of this. But the present and the past, it is not so. You can see all those data later. Stadium also, now cricket season. Many people are wanting to capture a particular moment which is unprecedented, unexpected to happen. But that is being captured by n number of people at a time. Instantly they wanted to share that pleasure to the rest of the people. Imagine the communication population there. Hot spot, it becomes hot spot. You may find it very difficult to meet such uh, such service to provide to all those people at a time. But you can be able to balance the stadium through these optical means. Plus all these things you, uh, you decentralize, you put on to the optical front hall, back hall, hard. Thus, optical along with the RF and help balance the load at the stadium, not only stadium, wherever you have hotspot, you can make use of that. 
it is also possible within the indoor connectivity. So such a wonderful optical wireless communication technologies, uh, though I told many positives and many enabling uh, features to realize the 5G and beyond 5G are the IoT soli services, uh, solutions to them, they do have some kind of challenges. What are those challenges? Frequent handover. When I say densification or more base stations, when I move from one lamp to another lamp, I have to undergo the handover mechanism. Handover, if it is genuine, okay, otherwise it is going to be a problem. How are, I, how are we going to handle that handover? Frequently happening handover. Intercell interference. Perfect loss. Limited uplink communication using this. Uplink, yes, since a low power LED, therefore uplink uh, uh, communication is limited, but we can improvise this. That is not the challenge. Low data rate at camera communication. We witnessed up to 55 megabits per second. It is a unidirectional communication. But that is also another one. Flickering avoidance. People witnessed uh, optical carrier can be modulated at the minimum of. So flickering happens. Flickering is um, it's not acceptable. Something like uh, fading of RF. Uh, this is flickering at uh, optical signal. Okay. Uh, in uh, street light, you would have seen it. It is not blowing continuously. Switch on, off, on, off, very frequently. Flickering. That should be there. It should be avoided. Data rate improvement at a backhaul through FSY is possible. And people realized with that uh, uh, huge bandwidth bitrate. The beautiful concept is lesson learning for or optical wireless communication. It could be supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning. All of them are challenging. Many of uh, rooms are available under the optical wireless communication to deploy ML, DL, deep learning. All those things are the challenges. Of course, are rather opportunities for us. Though I say limitations are some kind of constraints over the optical wireless channel uh, while, while providing solutions for 5G, 6G, they are really the opportunities for us to proceed further, to move further with the beautiful solutions. Yeah, we have problems. They are not the problem. They are the opportunities for us to proceed further to develop the technology. That too, a yeah, very amicable, very conducive, green ambience with a lot of fascinating attributes. With this, I would like to conclude. I, I, I know that I have exceeded my time, but uh, uh, you people may not mind it with that intention only I am proceeding. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, 5G communication is expected to hit the market by this year 2020. Uh, somehow, it is not realized in all places. There are many obstacles, we know. CP is expected to be released between 2027 and 2030. Giving the goal of 5G, 6G, and IoT on the basis of tactile internet is challenging. This technology can Go hand with the RF or existing uh, RF based technology that be able to realize the tactile. Therefore, 5G, 6G is possible. The most important and most challenging issues are the provision of high capacity, massive connectivity, low latency, high security, low energy consumption, high quality of experience. This is not possible to quantify, subjective. It is not objectifiable. But that also may be possible or can be possible with this. Highly reliable connectivity for beyond 5G communication system is possible. Only RF-based systems are unable to meet the high demands of all this. Able to meet. 
these technologies are the best complementary solution of RF. Yeah. So the coexistence of RF and optical wireless systems can achieve the goals of such networks. That is what to conclude. Thus, we believe that this presentation would have helped in understanding the different optical wireless systems for the deployment. Help us to move forward. Light can only help us to move forward. There is a meaning within that you please carefully read. Light helps us to move forward. You go in the dark. Light can only help us to move forward. Nobody else, or nobody, or nothing else can help us. With this small quote, I would like to conclude. The presentation. Wonderful, on, sir. On yes. optical wireless communications. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, one, uh, thank you very much, sir, Professor Nakirian, sir, and a wonderful quote. So uh, you have given clear information and wonderful information on the 5G and beyond 5G. And you have given insights into optical wireless communications and particularly applications and challenges. So I personally feel that so your lecture created a lot of interest to work in this field, sir. Thank you very much okay. for uh, sparing valuable time with us. And also uh, out of the, uh, the participants, also majority of the uh, professional members, definitely okay. your lecture will be helpful to them to work uh, in this field particularly. So in this regard, thank you very much, sir. In this regard, first I request uh, our respected Chai Lakshmi Narayan Garu to uh, speak a few words on this lecture, sir. I think he also uh, listened all the one and a half hour lecture, I think. Thank you, Lakshmi. Oh. <laughs> Lakshmi, sir, please speak a few words on this lecture, sir. Lakshmi, sir, please unmute yourselves and speak a few words. Mm. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, I heard that entire that to uh, Akiran. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think that uh, I could say basically see this is the one of the area where people can really work more in research. And I could with generally as a general user say this kind of a work will really help mostly the disaster management then suppose threats are coming and there is no options are gone therefore this is one area where you in fact to uh, uh, communication Lakshman, sir. Yeah, it's okay. There, there is a communication problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lakshman, sir. Uh, th uh, thank you, Nakiran, sir. And there are two questions from the audience, only two. So, can yeah. I ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please, please. The, the first question is How much Azad accord us to humans with millimetric wave communications? How much Ajah does to humans with MM wave communications? That's what I told earlier in the presentation itself. Uh, millimeter wave communication or any RF communication below optical or below IR, uh, actually that oscillation is not at all there in the universe. We only create that oscillation to have the communication by using some kind of external entities. The moment we generate that oscillation, Definitely, it has its own impact. But of course, the frequency of oscillation we talk about. What is the power level of that oscillation? That matters. The yeah, regu regulation authorities are uh, taken care to control all of them. So if the power level is within the specified level, nothing will happen. But prolonged exposure is also harmful. There is, uh, there is a potential for harmless. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Can I ask a second question, sir? Yeah, please. 
ah how do we classify the research in 5g uh, uh, can you elaborate your question how do we classify the research in 5g that is what your question i understand can you class- uh-huh. sir actually this was quoted by chakravarti garu i i request chakravarti garu please ask the your question yeah please explain your question sir yes sir uh, several aspects like antenna design for 5g applications and uh, people are, uh, many people are working on massive nemo and uh, some related the iot and 5g so uh, that, uh, it, it seems to be a very broad field in fact and complex uh, so electromagnetic what is the role of electromagnetic nemo what is the role of uh, this uh, engineers working on core coding and how do we uh, uh, Yeah, classify that research so that uh, uh, there are several research opportunities that i see uh, so how do we uh, find ourselves uh, uh, best way to pursue according to our expertise if maybe in antennas or maybe in communication uh the, 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 i i i do understand your questions but of course it is a very 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 uh, uh, basic or uh, i mean very fundamental one Uh, very complex to answer or very difficult to answer but i can uh, uh, answer this way uh, if you take any communication system uh, need not be a 5g or 6g or uh, uh, optical or rf uh, any communication system you can classify uh, the research area into two basically uh, from my point of view one is uh, resource management the other could be the quality of service Uh, whatever work you do you can classify them into one of these two categories resource management i i mean to say that it could be your power level or spectrum associated or something like a, i want to minimize the power consumption i want to prolong the life i want to prolong uh, uh, effectively use my spectrum all these things will be part and parcel of your resource management the other side if you say i want to improvise the Uh, delay I, i want to reduce the delay associated i want to speed up my system or i want to improve the throughput i want to minimize the jitter i want to uh, do that kind of associated attributes all of them can be put under the quality of uh, service quality of uh, experience so besides that nothing else is that you take any work you take any work that can be put one of these two categories it could be either resource or it could be either quality yeah. for example you, i think i answered if you have anything to ask you more yes sir i it's a great initiation sir thank you very much i i got the point so i can uh, go on these lines now ah yes yes thank you thank you sir chakravarti garu and uh, my friend sir one more question from dr mv subbarao garu please ask your question sir yeah you po- you posted the some text in the chat box but it is somewhat lengthy you can ask directly to the nakiran sir yeah subbara uh, sir actually ha uh, sir uh, this is subbara sir sir in oh. general uh, general user equipments we preferred uh, because of the power requ- uh, power limitations we are using low power leds sir yes so that's why that's why lifi cannot perform well in uh, uplink communications sir yeah that i told as a challenges yes ah uh, yes sir then how to overcome this one in 60 sir in uh, designing of the leds um uh, only thing is that uh, first of all it comes under the resource management uh, to answer um, uh, dr chakravarti's question is at this next step it is a part okay. of resource management please remember uh, 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 yes as on date it is a problem it is a challenge for us to proceed further i feel personally we cannot increase the power of uh, 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 transmission power of led but we can go for new leds uh, material science is also coming up parallelly we don't know yes, yes. what is going to be the uh, new material to lace optical signal that signal probably may have some kind of new property beyond coherence in terms of time and space beyond coherence probably that would be uh, one solution or we can go for some kind of transponder transponder 
something like a cooperative mechanism what we used to have in the case of the traditional communication that kind of cooperative communication mechanism can be extended life okay sir thank you sir thank you sir. thank you thank you. Uh, thank you thank you thank you sir now i request uh, dr mv subbarao garu treasurer of the our chapter communication and signal processing society joint chapter it will be vijay agar section to propose vote of thanks okay sir thank you sir thank you for giving this opportunity sir it gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks firstly i would like to thank our today's guest and my guru professor arna kiran garu who honored this event with his great excellent talk sir we all are inspired by your talk towards beyond 5g and 6g and this talk is very useful for the research scholars and teachers and students for their research in uh, optical communications thank you sir thank you for your uh, uh, for acceptance of our request we need your uh, cooperation in future also sir yeah next thank next i would like to thank the executive committee members dr sn garu chair iwb visag section and sisti garu secretary dr sudhir kumar garu and other ec members who attended this talk i would like to thank our cosmos and uh, sps team dr uh, tsr murthy garu chair dr vvs samee chakravarty garu vice chair dr uday kumar garu secretary dr a ravi kumar garu and hema madam who successfully organized this event finally i would like to thank iw members staff and students of various engineering colleges who attended this talk and making this event a grand success we look forward to same in this future also once again i thank one and all thank, thank you sir thank you thank you so sir and th- again th- I, I, I thank you very much sir professor nakir yeah. sir we would like wait 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 murti aru murti aru please ah, before, sir, sir, closing, before closing we will have national anthem Okay, okay. And a photo too, I think. I will take the first one. You want photo yeah. session? Yes, yeah, sir. I request all the um, participants, please switch on the video to take one more nice photograph. Please switch on the video. Makiran, sir, please switch on the video. Yes, sir. I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. చక్రవర్తి గారు ప్రొఫెసర్ ఏడుకొండల గారు ఏడుకొండల సార్ ప్లీజ్ స్విచ్ ఆన్ చక్రవర్తి గారు ప్లీజ్ స్విచ్ ఆన్ వీడియో ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఆల్ దదర్ మెంబర్స్ ఆల్సో ప్లీజ్ స్విచ్ ఆన్ ద వీడియో Okay. Thank you. Please take the photo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I have taken, sir. I have taken. Now national anthem. Yeah. Now na- national anthem, yes, sir. Oh. Yeah, I am playing. Play, play, play. Play, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes,
थैंक यू सर